Hi, I'm Angeline. Today I want to share with you something that's kind of weird and confusing. Um, it is rock art that isn't necessarily what we might consider to be art. It's more like just slashes on the rock or holes in the rock. What you might call artification, not necessarily what we think of as art. It requires us of the modern mindset to kind of step outside of what we know, clear your mind, and put yourself into a frame of mind where you are living day to day with the earth. So you wake up in the morning with the sun, you deal with the plants and the and the and the dirt in the ground and the animals that eat those plants and those animals go into your body therefore your body is the plants and the animals and you you are the dirt and the sky with the sun is what makes those plants that feed the chain grow and so there's this kind of fundamental appreciation of this cycle of the dirt actually being you. You are the earth. And in addition to that, words are not necessary to communicate your thoughts. You don't feel a compulsion to catalog the things that you say in writing. In fact, when you speak, words are used to make somebody else do something. It's a way to communicate a message to another living being and for them to respond in some way. You don't just talk and talk and talk because you need to express yourself, but rather words are only used in a way that makes another person respond. So this linguistic, symbolic idea of writing things down or using words merely for expression is not necessarily the core of your existence. Now, it's a little bit hard for us to imagine that because we live in a world where right now I'm speaking to you as a way to communicate something. I'm not necessarily trying to get you to do anything, but I'm trying to share information. Um, if you live in a community where there is only I don't know, you know, 10 people maybe, and they're all family members, that need, the compulsion to communicate isn't so urgent because everybody was there the first time. It's sort of like when my mom tries to tell me stories about what happened during my childhood. And I'm like, um, I know, cause I was there. Why is this news to me, <laughs> right? So it's, it, think it's something like that. Um, I'm not making this up. Rock art studies have come a long way in the last 30 years and people have delved into the the remnants and the communications that have been left by a wide range of homo sapiens from the earliest of times to the most modern times and this is kind of the the momentum of thought about how people used symbols in prehistoric times and how they used markings that weren't necessarily symbols. This is a lot of words <laughs> to describe this idea of just making a gash in a rock. Why would you do that? Why would a person just make a gash in the rock? Why would somebody just grind a hole in the rock? And then that's it. It doesn't have a symbolic meaning. It doesn't seem to have a, a parent's geometry or symmetry or anything like that. It's just merely a scratch and a scrape and a this, but it's clearly done intentionally and for not necessarily a practical, um, you know, purpose. So what I saw at this particular location out in uh, Death Valley is a series of volcanic boulders leading up to a more modern petroglyph panel that featured a number of um, geometric images as well as bighorn sheep. But the boulders kind of leading up the drainage to this volcanic um, 
outcropping of a number, like a huge wall of volcanic boulders, was boulders that just had gashes on them, just dozens and dozens of gashes. And stepping back a moment to the Paiute live in an area where there's a lot of volcanic activity. And there are stories of the Paiute from the Great Basin actually going to Ornitos, which are little bubbling up lava places in the rock, and taking bits of pottery and smashing it into those Ornitos, and then extracting pieces of pottery. And because those pieces of pottery are covered with the lava, they become sacred objects that are power objects. What they've done is they have harnessed the earth. They've harnessed Mother Earth, that earth that we eat and that we're made of because we put it into our bodies and we become part of the earth. That is our Mother Earth. They've harnessed what's bubbling up. What's bubbling up is a combination of fire, the sun that, make, that fertilizes the earth and the Mother Earth itself. That has become fire, which bubbles up as, as this amalgam of heat and earth, and it becomes this sacred, fertile source. Now, the people who live in the Death Valley, California, today are called the Timbisha Shoshone. They tell you that they were actually born on that land. They came out of the Yubihibi Crater, which they call Coyote's Breadbasket. And no, uh, is it Coyote's bread basket? It's definitely Coyote's basket. And Coyote left his basket. People were born out of that Yubihibi crater, which had a tremendous volcanic explosion. You can find these volcanic boulders miles and miles away. And there's a lot of volcanic activity in the Death Valley area, including this place where I had gone. So the people will tell you they were born in that land. Archaeologists will tell you that there were, um, archaic people that came into Death Valley much, much before that. And then about a thousand or more, a little more years ago, the Timbisha Shoshone showed up as a second wave from the Utah, Nevada, Eastern region, the almost the Plains region of the Great Basin. So we can make a relevance between how the Paiute understood the power of volcanic lava and how people of the Death Valley area would have also revered the same volcanic rock. So taking a look at these gashes in the rock, what some researchers think is that it's a way to interact basically interact with the mother, basically to interact with the mother earth, to scrape away a portion of that flesh. And sometimes that rock, the, the, the sand that you're able to scrape away from a rock has been ingested to enhance fertility. It's also been placed into the female rep reproductive organs, the sand placed into the female reproductive organs, or, or just, you know, the outer part. <laughs> <laughs> um, to enhance fertility. It's clear and clearly was a, you know, a powerful source. And then when you take the idea of cupules, just to touch on this because it's this whole own topic, um, cupules, one of the ways that indigenous peoples have claimed themselves to have used cupules is it's not the cup, cupule is a little divot in the rock like this. It's not actually the divot, the, the end result that is the thing that is the intention. It's the making of the cupule that's the important part. And one of the way, reasons to make that cupule is to grind out parts, pieces of rock, the sand. The, the, end, the end result is to get that sand and to use it in ritual. So sometimes you can find cupules that's the only piece of rock art you find in a boulder. And that cupule is the result of something more significant. So the symbol is not in the cupule, the symbol is, symbol is in the making of the cupule. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. So as I was traveling this path down the drainage, down this uh, water, ancient waterway, and seeing these rocks with the slashes in it, this is what intrigued me. I'm gonna show you 
a slideshow of the more uh, symbolic, pictographic, um, graphic images that uh, the petroglyphs that were on the volcanic boulders at the head of the canyon that show some things that you might find to be more recognizable. But they're all part of the same people, but possibly over thousands of years of generations, which is sort of fascinating in itself. of this canyon and you know walking down the canyon toward this little waterfall right there really beautiful this is a uh, funeral peak but I, I scrambled up this because I saw this little what looks like kind of a little cave it's not really a cave but it's a little I don't know concave place and I was sitting there kind of looking out over the canyon and I see over here kind of a, a bowl filled with dirt and rocks and I emptied it out. I spent about the last 10 minutes scraping out all the mud that it built up in there and it's really smooth. I can't, I, I filled it with water a little bit to see how smooth it is compared to this rock and if it's natural or if it was carved, but I don't know. It's it's a depression anyway, it's, and I don't really see anything else like that on any of the other rocks the whole time I've been in this canyon. And right, sitting right next to it is this rock that's also been abraded smooth on one side. See? And that's smooth. You know, it's exactly the shape of this depression. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. So taking a look at these gashes in the rock, what some researchers think is that it's a way to interact, basically interact with the mother, basically to interact with the mother earth to enhance fertility. It's clear and clearly was a, you know, a powerful source. Thank you so much for watching. I support this channel with the sale of my handmade art, bead art that I make in the style of the huichol of Mexico. This is what I've been doing lately. It's um, eggs. They're something like Fabergé eggs, but Southwestern style. <laughs> They're tiny little beads, beads pressed into beeswax and pine pitch. And then they're sealed in and they are representative of the huichol nirica, which is the eye of God, the point at which humans meet God. They're meditation devices, but they're also beautiful, just um, decorative items. You can find these at theancientsouthwest.com. And if that doesn't interest you, I thank you very much for watching. Please hop over to the Facebook group and share your travels and your adventures and your photos. Just general photos of the Southwest are most welcome. Anything with nature, anything with pictographs, petroglyphs, um, something from the ancient times of Southwest, even just uh, geography is wonderful. Um, 
that Facebook group is called Ancient Southwest. The website is theancientsouthwest.com. I thank you so much for joining me for this and have a wonderful day. Mwah. Slips away And ten years Bump by so fast And never was hard Every one or two I'm holding my breath As the seasons change Who is this bed In the mirror And it's so easy Thank you.